So this is question four from paper two of the 2014 National 5 Maths exam. We've got a runner who's recorded times as this. So we've got six pieces of data and we're asked to calculate the mean of these lap times, showing clearly all our working. So let's do that. So this is A part one. And we're working out the mean, x bar. So the mean is the sum of these. Just to explain what we're doing. 53 plus 57 plus 58 plus 60 plus 55 plus 56. And we have to divide by the number of data that we have, which is 6. So we could get our calculator out and do this, but let's kid on these were all 50s. Six 50s is 300, so how much above 50 is each of these? So we've got 3 plus 7 is 10, plus 8 is 18, plus another 10 is 28, plus 5 is uh, 33, plus 6 is 39. So it should come to 339. Divided by 6, 6 into 33 is 5, 6 into 39 goes 6 with 3 left over, that's 0.5. So 56.5. As I said, you could easily do this on your calculator. But there's 56.5. So let's have a look at part 2. Calculate the standard deviation of these lap times, showing clearly all your working. So in your exam, you will be given a formula. There it is. Two versions. S, remember, is the letter that stands for standard deviation. We're going to use the first formula, which I think in this case is slightly easier. So part two, there's a part two. Usually a little table of results is OK, where we put the first column, the data points themselves, 53, 57, 58, 60, 55, and 56. So that's first column. Second column, the deviations from the mean. So we take each data point and find the difference between the data point and the mean. Some of them will be negative. So this first case, remember the mean is 56.5. So the first case, 53 minus 56.5, which will give us negative 3.5. Second one is 57 minus 56.5. That's 0 0.5. 58 minus 56.5. That's 1.5. 60 minus 56.5. 3.5. 55 minus 56.5 is minus 1.5 and 56 minus 56.5 is negative 0 0.5. So we now have to look at the squares of these deviations from the mean. So what's 3.5 times 3.5? Possibly you don't know that. So 3.5 times 3.5, that's 12.25. And it'll be positive, 12.25. Remember, you square a negative number, you get positive. So all these squared deviations from the mean will be positive. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, 0 0.25. You'll notice this one will be the same. And also there's a 3.5 squared, which we know is 12.25. And 1.5 times 1.5 will be 2.25. You can check that in your calculator. 2.25. So back to the formula, we've now managed to work out each of these six squared deviations from the mean. The sigma means we add them. So down here we can put the sum of the squared deviations 
from the mean. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 3 for 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. 1, 3 for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 2. So 29.50 I make it for the top of this fraction. Now, in this case, how many data points are there? There are six. So n minus 1 will be 5, one less than the number of data points. And we now have to work out the square root of this total divided by 1 less than the number of data points. So that's easy enough to do the division by 5. That's 5 into 29 goes 5, 4 left over. 5 9s and 45. So we get 5.9 square root of, and that involves a calculator. So square root of 5.9, in this case we close the brackets, and that gives us 2.428 and so on. So approximately, let's get rid of this approximately 2.4. Now, does it tell us... It doesn't tell us how accurate, but certainly it would need to be at least one decimal place. Um, so, approximately 2.4, and we'll state what we've done to one decimal place. So that's part two. Now, let's have a look at part... 3. So in part B, she's got a new training routine. She wants to know whether this is a more consistent training routine, which would mean that her lap times are more bunched together around the mean rather than spread out around the mean. We're given a new mean. Let's just remind ourselves that the original uh, the mean remember was 56.5 with a standard deviation of 2.4 and the new regime that she endures we've got a mean 55 seconds so she's certainly improved uh, the times are less, so she's running faster. But is she as consistent? Let's look at the standard deviation. That's increased. Now, if you look at how the data points are distributed about the mean, suppose that's the mean, in a lot of cases you'll, you'll get this sort of bell-shaped distribution where, in this case, compared to, say, let's, let's take, Let's take one like this, where the number of data points around the mean is more spread out. You'll get larger readings, smaller readings. Compared to this, this is tightly bunched about the, the mean. Uh, in this case, this is a small standard deviation, and this one is a larger standard deviation. The data points are more spread out. So in this case, because the standard deviation is larger than we had originally, she's more inconsistent. So give a reason for your answer. Has it improved it? No. Since the standard deviation has increased and give the values from 2.4 to 3.2. So the data points are more spread out around, it's more like this case, more spread out around the mean than we had previously.